So Sandy, you know, so we're talking about high-risk resected patients, and, and for some patients, high-risk resected disease is not very far from early metastatic disease. And we see a lot of patients with metastatic kidney cancer, and, and we've talked a little bit about using uh, prognostic systems to help us identify who we would choose for what therapies. So before we get into a conversation about what therapies to choose, how do you evaluate the newly diagnosed metastatic patient? And, and also, uh, help me understand where you think active surveillance might fit into that paradigm for some of those people. So I think uh, for a patient with newly diagnosed disease, when I sit in front of the patient, some of the things I think about is, what's the goal that we are hoping to accomplish in this patient? Is, a, is there a minimal local, minimum disease that perhaps you could give some systemic therapy or even just consider uh, metastatectomy? You know, so I really start off by finding out what the goal that we are hoping to accomplish. If you have a patient with widespread liver mets and bone mets, it's unlikely that you can use that approach. So I think goal is important. Second, I think the um, performance status of the patient, age of patient, has always been part of our uh, decision making. So if somebody's young and fit, uh, we continue to give high dose IL-2. So I'll certainly bring that up. Um, even though we have other immunotherapy that's uh, less toxic, it's tempting, but I think high dose IL-2 con continues to be part of their therapy. So I think about age, I think about uh, performance status, and then there are some known prognostic factors. I've really not used them to pick a therapy, but I think it's helpful for a patient to sort of put them in different buckets just in terms of how they are likely to do and what their life expectancy could be. So Ty, some of the patients that we see with metastatic disease uh, don't come to us after having a prior nephrectomy, they come to us with a primary tumor in place. And, and we now have a, more than a decade worth of data uh, where we've integrated cytoreductive nephrectomy into our clinical practice, uh, yet there really is not firm data about cytoreductive nephrectomy in the era of targeted therapy prospectively. Uh, what, how do you navigate through with your urologic oncology colleagues decisions about when to leave the kidney in, when to take it out in the setting of metastatic disease? So I usually stratify or risk stratify the patient based on the clinical criteria. So I look at things like anemia, calcium, I look at their level of platelets, neutrophils, and this gives me a sense of what their overall uh, prognosis is going to be. And the other advantage, at least for cytoduct nephrectomy, sometimes you can palliate the symptoms of a lot of patients who have a high tumor burden and they may have, have some symptoms from that. Um, the other advantage I find from cytoduct nephrectomy is that you get tissue, both therapeutic and diagnostic. Uh, and in the past, you know, people have shown overall survival benefit in patients with uh, good and intermediate uh, risk uh, kidney cancer. So when I talk to the ne urologist, uh, the goal of the cytoduct nephrectomy is both palliation, potential for overall survival, and also getting diagnostic tissue. Would you say that most of your patients with primary tumors in place in metastatic disease undergo a cytoreductive nephrectomy? If their performance status is good and they're an operative candidate, they do. 